And welcome to Hannity. We have a busy news night for you. Coming up, we're going to bring you the very latest from Biden's border crisis and crime crisis. Things are more out of control than ever. It's shocking and all of it preventable. Also, swimmer Riley Gaines will be here. She was just attacked again. Trans activists even spitting at her during a ceremonial bill signing in Texas. Uh, but first, I think we right here on this show. We did hit a nerve at the Biden White House. Apparently, they were watching this program last night. By the way, thank you all for watching at the White House. And we're triggered by this interview with the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. When you move to an impeachment inquiry, it empowers Congress, Republicans and Democrats, within their subpoena to be able to get the answers they need. Because we have found time and again, we haven't seen anything like this since the Nixon administration using their government to shut down any time we had a question. I would think the Biden family would want to clear their name. First, I, I really am, it's, it means a lot to me that the Biden White House is watching this show, but they are clearly terrified of what is a very real impeachment inquiry. And Joe Biden's White House is now lashing out and accusing Speaker McCarthy for what he said on the show of actually lying. Whoa, considering Joe's the biggest liar, that gets interesting. Now, wait until they hear the breaking news. I'm going to give the White House a preview of coming attractions. You want to tune in tomorrow night and the night after. There's going to be a lot of news. And in a lengthy statement from White House counsel, their spokesperson, Ian Sims, well, that probably took him all night to write. Sims is complaining that McCarthy is lying about three specific things. Now, here's the first alleged lie. Quote, McCarthy told Hannity, the Biden administration has obstructed House Republican investigations. This is demonstrably false. Well, that's very odd, since the Republicans leading the investigations, they've both been on this program, James Comer, Jim Jordan, they say that is demonstrably true. And it started right after the GOP won their majority in the House last year. And according to Politico, quote, the Biden White House launched their first major broadside in response to incoming House Republicans. Quote, the Biden administration had no immediate plans to respond to a slew of records requests. Instead, the White House demanded that Republicans start from scratch in 2023. Um, that does not seem very cooperative. That's certainly not transparent to me. But the obstruction, it didn't stop there. According to the House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer, well, the Biden Treasury Department refused to turn over the suspicious activity reports that they requested. Those were racked up by the Biden uh, family syndicate, unless, of course, a Democrat signed on to the request, which in itself was a highly unusual usual request. And while Biden's Treasury Department ultimately had to cave, they were stalling for as long as possible. And of course, Biden's FBI also, as you know, if you watch this program, attempted to obstruct and stall important House oversight. You may remember after House Republicans asked the FBI to produce that 1023 form documenting bribery allegations against Joe and Hunter Biden from a trusted and well-paid in the past FBI source, the FBI first refused to even confirm its very existence. Then Director Ray, well, he defied a legally binding subpoena and refused to produce even a redacted version of the document. It was only produced after the Republicans had to push it this far and were on the verge of holding the FBI director, Chris Ray, in contempt. And we'll have more on this 1023 form in a moment. Now, sadly, roadblocks were employed and are employed anytime a Republican has requested information on the Bidens. But apparently, that is news to Biden's spokesperson, Ian Sims, who basically lied himself today or is completely ignorant. So is the unusual $3.5 million payment from the Russian oligarch to Hunter Biden. Now, Sims claims that Speaker McCarthy, that his claim had been debunked by The Washington Post. Wow. Now, contrary to what Mr. Sims would have you believe, Hunter Biden did receive $3.5 million from the former first lady and oligarch in Moscow, uh, according to the U.S. Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs and the U.S. Senate Committee on Finance. Let me read from their 2020 report, quote, Hunter Biden received a $3.5 million wire transfer from Alina Baterina, the wife of the 
former mayor of Moscow. The report continues, quote, on February 14, 2014, Baterina wired $3.5 million to a Rosemont Seneca Thornton LLC bank account for a consultancy agreement. That's Hunter's business. Anyway, Rosemont Seneca Thornton is the investment firm co-founded by Hunter Biden. On July 31st of this year, well, Hunter's friend and business partner, Devin Archer, confirmed this payment during testimony on Capitol Hill. And he said he wasn't really sure why the payment was made. And quote, it was not supposed to go in that bank account, but that's where it went. And according to Archer, Baterina's company invested $120 million more million in their real estate fund. And Archer also testified that a few months later in the spring of 2014, Hunter and Joe, who was Joe at the time vice president, and this Russian oligarch, they had a beautiful dinner together at Cafe Milano in Washington, D.C. Uh, Ian, do you care to explain this one? Uh, were they just talking about the weather, or was this all one big illusion? Which brings us back to the FBI 1023 form. Now, in his lengthy fact-checking statement, well, Sims accused Speaker McCarthy on this program last night of spreading lies about this form and took issue with McCarthy's claim that the FBI did not act on the bribery allegations from its own trusted informant. And Sims claims that this has been thoroughly debunked by guess who? The Washington Post, the propaganda outlet for all things Democratic Socialist. Now, Sims wants us to trust that the FBI handle the allegations appropriately. Well, apparently, in the left's fantasy world, the politicized FBI should never be scrutinized. Forget the Russia collusion hoax. Forget that the FBI propagated all that for years and years. Forget about Hillary's dirty dossier that they used uh, to get and secure one, not one but four FISA warrants and use as evidence to backdoor spy on the Trump campaign and ruin Carter Page's life, uh, forget about FISA abuse and the politically biased FBI agents that were fired for lying, forget about the FBI's efforts to pre-bunk Hunter Biden's very real laptop during weekly meetings that they had with big tech, even though the FBI had had possession of that laptop and verified its authenticity. They had the laptop in December of 2019. They knew it was real by March of 2020. Then why were they meeting with big tech companies in the weeks leading up to the 2020 presidential election, telling them these big tech companies may be victims of a misinformation campaign, a hack and dump operation, and it might be about Joe and Hunter Biden. And if they love the WAP fact checkers so much. Um, why didn't Mr. Sims uh, today uh, cite the four Pinocchios that they gave Joe Biden when he actually lied about money that his family got from China? Uh, sorry, Ian uh, Sims, I think uh, we're done uh, taking the FBI or any Biden at their word. And by the way, now you're included in that category, especially this close to a presidential election. So I have a question or two for Mr. Sims, now that I know he's watching. Now, Mr. Sims, did candidate and President Joe Biden, will you acknowledge and admit to the truth that he lied to the country repeatedly when he said he never, ever one time discussed his uh, foreign business deals with Hunter or his brother or anyone else for that matter? Uh, he lied as president. He lied as a candidate. We all know he lied. But if the Bidens have really nothing to hide and want to clear their good name, they should instruct, well, the FBI to open up their books and show us their investigation. And of course, that's not going to happen. Now, they don't want us to follow the money because as Speaker McCarthy laid out last night, all roads lead to the big guy himself. Take a look. If you're an expert when it comes to foreign policy, why isn't it Italy or the UK or France hiring you? Why is it just Ukraine, Russia, China, oh. Romania? And why is the then at the time advocating and putting your family members on boards that you want action in? Why are you providing these families Porsches? Why are you saying you have no no saying in this business, but now we find, lo and behold, you've gone to dinners. And after those dinners, $3.5 yeah. million dollars flows. Now, noticeably missing from Ian Sims' statement is a rebuttal to those allegations. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.